how to do that. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm Dan Crozier. Uh, we're here uh, uh, for another installation of Kofo Live and Undead. Uh, I'm here with my friend uh, Kevin Ward, the uh, special effects maestro. And, um, you know, Kevin, uh, my first introduction to you was on Sci Fi Channel's Face Off. Uh, just watching you going through the the gauntlet and uh, and rooting for you as you know, kind of the the Colorado Denver homeboy, you know, the the, the town favorite. Um, Thank you. So, what season was that? That was on season nine, and I've since gone back for season thirteen. Season thirteen oh was an all star season. That's awesome. Yeah, so I went back for that. That season aired, I guess. I think it was last year. Yeah, it aired last year. Oh my gosh. So that was, I hung in there for a while. It, <laughs> it was fun. It, it was quite a lot of fun. You know, the frustrating thing is I always, I always seem to know more or my skills seem to be more refined when it's too late. I'm like, man, mm -hmm. how come I didn't know some of these things when I was on season nine? Yeah. Then when I went back to season 13, I thought, okay, I know all these things. Now I know even more. Yeah. So, you know, the upside to that is you always want to outdo yourself. Sometimes you're like, wow. Should have known that before. But yeah, <laughs> it's a journey. Nice. Now, um, yeah, we're here with you because you have created your, your own uh, streaming TV series. It's it's on YouTube. So far, YouTube. Yeah. Soon there will be some new contents. We're moving into season two, and I'm really excited about that. We have ten new episodes. What is it? Bored as hell. Bored as Bored, hell. Bored as hell. So. Essentially, Satan has retired from hell, he lives on Earth, and he gets himself into funny sitcom-like situations. We're going to see some appearances from the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Oh, that's awesome. We're going to meet the Hella Tubbies and a few other fun demons. There, was, wasn't there a, a Hella Tubby in, in like a, a sequence in, in one of the episodes in Season 1? We didn't see Hella Tubbies in Season 1. Really? Okay. I'm trying to think what we saw. We did have a few demons in the first few episodes. Yeah. And I remember the spaghetti monster. It looked like something right out of Guar. Good. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. the spaghetti. I'm looking forward to the spaghetti monster. Fun fact, he's made out of styrofoam meatballs and awesome. a bunch of rubber bands. So it goes to show you, you don't need the biggest budget in the world. Yeah. It's just, you know, sometimes cheap materials, love, and initiative. Yeah, well, yield some good results. Yeah, and, and with my experience, like limitation does breed uh, innovation. Definitely, and it forces creativity too. Yeah, because sometimes we don't always have the resources we want. Yeah, so you gotta get creative with what you have. You gotta get creative with the space you have. Yeah, because we made my friend Irene's basement look like an, an actual studio. Because mm -hmm. Satan while on Earth, has landed himself employment with his own call-in access show, mm -hmm. to Satan Station, <laughs> where the only charge is your salvation. Nice. Uh, yeah, but we, we turned a basement into a, a studio. We also have employed the use of miniatures a lot, so if you can't make a full-scale fantasy world, you can make a miniature, and that doesn't always have to cost you very much. Yeah. Oh, man. It, I find it absolutely fantastic that you're able to do a whole, you know, series of, of episodes, like, you know, a whole season. And there's so much special effects. There's so much stuff, you know, going into it. But you're also, what, writing, producing, acting in it. Uh, you know, we, we saw you in, in, well, I remember seeing you in the, the first episode as uh, Hans Crippleton, which is an old, uh, you know, character of yours. Old core favorite of yeah. mine. Yeah, Hans began at the haunted house. I worked for the 13th floor oh, for many years, and that was a character I started a long time ago. He's just kind of this funny, deformed hillbilly. <laughs> uh, and we made a movie just about him and his family for fun, and that was cool because that was sort of the catalyst for these other projects I've done. And, and it helped me get on to Face Off just because I learned a lot of valuable skills, working under pressure, meeting deadlines, and also having to improvise a lot because mm -hmm. things will always go wrong things go wrong on set a lot things yeah. go wrong on face off a lot and you just you, you gotta get creative and come up with happy accidents i guess yeah yeah um yeah basically you know taking those accidents and see how you can work them out or, or incorporate them 
Yeah, it's it's happened yeah. numerous times. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, can you tell us a little bit about you know your upbringing? You know, are you like a native to to Colorado and Denver? Did you go to school? No, here? I grew up in Wyoming actually. Oh no, yeah, kidding! Hot Springs, Wyoming. Oh, yeah, nice. born and raised, and I moved to Denver in 2006 to attend art school. Oh, where'd you go? The Art Institute. Oh, okay, fantastic. Uh, oh, who is, did you learn under Todd Debrissini? Not there. He okay. did teach there. I have since worked with him. Oh, nice. And he's showed me, he showed me quite a lot, actually. Nice. Yeah, he's always been really, really generous with information and tips and all that, so. That's cool. Yeah, we've, uh, I met him post-AI. Okay. We've worked on some things together. Nice. That's great. So um, outside of uh, like uh, bored as hell, you know, do uh, you got other projects, you know, forthcoming or um, is the focus just to get season two out? Right now the focus is season two. It's been very arduous actually because mm. it's taken, we started season one back in 2015. Okay. Uh, we, we managed to get a few really short episodes out and then, since then, we premiered that October 2000, no it wasn't, it was September 2017, okay. and then I've since hit the ground running, trying to get some new episodes out. So it's been nonstop, mm. uh, yeah. and it's been my focus as far as extracurricular projects go. I have a few mm. other ideas in yeah. the works, but right now, more as hell is about my focus. Yeah. Nice. Very excited to get it done. It's It's been hard. It's been fun, but. It's been hard. It's been really hard. Yeah, it it looks really dif difficult. It looks like a you know a wonderful labor of love. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it uh, you know back in the I think the late nineties and early two thousand. Um, yeah, I was first introduced to like the band Guar yeah. through their like little movies and you know on VHS and stuff and and some of their concert footage and stuff before even going to a Guar concert. So when I see Satan. And the spaghetti monster on on TV. Yeah. I was just like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, I'm on. You know, I'm on the set, or I'm watching another episode of Guar, <laughs> of one of those movies. You know that they used to. We, we've openly made jokes on the episodes about how he looks like a groupie of Guar. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. It looks like somebody that's been passed around. <laughs> well, and the whole point is to not take it too seriously. It's, yeah. I guess, I, I've had to describe it before, well, many times actually, mm -hmm. and. A friend of mine said you should narrow it down, like make comparisons. And so we decided it's Jim Henson meets South Park in the Saturday Night Live formula. Okay. So it's basically the episodes mm. aren't very long. It's just ten to fifteen minutes sketch comedy. Yeah. Which employs puppetry and special effects makeup. Yeah. And a very a very stylized story world mm -hmm. with edgy adult kind of humor. So that's the package there. Yeah, uh, when you, you know, I recommend going to YouTube right now. Not, not right now, after this, Wait. after this. Uh, and uh, look up Bored to Death. Is What's the, the handle for YouTube? Bored as hell. Type in, you might have to type my name in too, just because Bored as hell is not, it hasn't become mainstream enough yet mm -hmm. for the algorithms sure. to go to Bored as hell. People yeah. will just post a video like, okay. I'm Bored as hell or something. <laughs> you can come out, Maya. If you, you can want. come on out. It's Maya, okay. Maya can pop in. Maya has been oh. a few up. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> I look real. Well, look, it's Maya. Real gross no. right now. Maya is a. Local, you look better put together than me. She's a local Denver <laughs> actress, and you'll you'll see her in a few new episodes. Yeah. Excellent. No makeup, doing my laundry. What's up, everybody? Well, she, <laughs> she's Satan's girlfriend. Excellent. As you can see. Well, you, of course, Satan's girlfriend <laughs> would be sporting a Rick and Morty shirt. Hell yeah. <laughs> as you can tell, got the total dominatrix look right now. <laughs> Pajamas, yeah, that that is domineering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, you, that's funny because yeah, she was very, uh, she's in charge. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, if I remember so, there was a couple episodes where, right? Because she was in the first. Season, yeah, right? she's the one that told Satan he looks like a groupie from Gore. Okay, so, yeah, nice. Was, Speaking yeah. of which, episodes. nice. Yeah. So, so perfect timing on uh, you know jumping in because we were just commenting before that. <laughs> that, uh, that that's fantastic. So, yeah, um, so putting together. Oh, uh, one more thing though. Yeah, I almost forgot to, to you know to plug that uh, the Bug Theater uh, August 11th is where they are going to be screening 
uh, at 2 p.m. Oh, um, noon. What's that? Noon. Oh, at noon. Oh, sorry. I mean, we'll probably hang out until 2 p.m., but you'll miss it if you show up at 2 p.m. Okay. Show, show up before. Show up at noon on uh, August 11th at the Bug Theater here in Denver. Uh, how many episodes? The whole season? Yeah. So ten nice. New episodes. Nice. Ten new episodes. The Bug Theater is cool. They're very yeah. supportive and they're very indie friendly. So I like driving traffic to them. And this was a cool, fun, humble venue. We actually we hosted Board as Hell there the first time. Yeah. That we okay. showed us. And that was, uh, that was what, 2017? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're coming up in two years. Nice. Yeah, I wanted to base I wanted to have new stuff out the one year anniversary mm -hmm. after our first screening, but you know, when you're trying to do something independently and you have a day job and yeah. your actors have day jobs and your crew, it's really hard. So two years to get ten new episodes out, I figure it's not bad timing. We spent the first year filming it and yeah. then it, Post production took about a year too. Well, it's it's like the British model, you know, take three years to, to do like three episodes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If if anything, your 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 turnout is is a lot more efficient. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it because <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah, it was difficult because quite a few times our episodes required a specialty set. Mm -hmm. So. Once in a while, we got off easy. If you just need to shoot a scene in the park, you go to a park and film yep. it. But we've had to do, we've had to film at Satan Station before, so that required a lot of work. We've done time period episodes mm. where we meet the flying spaghetti monster. We go back in time because Satan's preparing the Last Supper. Okay. So it's <laughs> the era where when Jesus lived, and so we had to create an old kitchen. We used. La Fonde Effects, that's yeah. a studio down the street. My good friend and boss works mm -hmm. there, and, well, he owns the place and hires me for projects, and he's let me use that space a few times. So we built, nice. you know, we, we built an old, old kitchen there. We built a courtroom there once because we have another episode that is about the Salem Witch Trials. Okay. Satan shows up to a courtroom and kind of is, well, he's offended by the fact that people are accusing these girls of the devil's magic. He's yeah. like, wait, 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 wait. That is not the devil's magic. Right. So anyways, uh, that was hard too because we, you know, we had to build an entire set for that one. Okay. Oh, man. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So on these productions too, you're assembling, you know, a team. Like how many people usually takes you know to create an episode the primary people would be right now it's and it's changed over the years right mm -hmm. now it's myself as writer producer director the effects artist Keith Hine very good long-term friend funny mm -hmm. he's right here actually. oh fantastic say hello Heath. he plays Satan. there's his portrait Nathaniel Shields a Colorado Springs talent is doing all the cinematography nice. he does great work actually it's very when you look at his work, it looks yeah. very cinematic. Cool. And then I have some rotating people also. A good friend of mine, Dennis Vincent, he's provided help. Oh, on. yeah. I know of him. He recently finished Rage of the Mummy. He's lent his help to lighting work, sound work, post-production mm -hmm. audio. Oh, cool. My good friend, girlfriend, Elizabeth Fitter, has helped me on set many times. She also does makeup. Well, you know yeah, her. I know. And Elizabeth. then my friend Irene Leonard has been gracious enough to let us use her home. And oh, cool. Where we've built the set. And she's, she's appeared on a, a number of episodes also. Nice. Nice. So I don't know how many people did I say. It, it's, I guess, reoccurring. It takes four or five people, give and take. Okay. Um, a lot of people appear again. So either they want another cameo or they want a, yeah. they want a part. Yeah. That's cool. So, you know, when you're sitting down for the, like, the, the writing process, you know, doing the next season or the next episode, um, you know, do you write for your your actors, you know, people that, that want to recurring that, um, you know, parts, or just whatever, you know, fun, gonzo idea I don't comes know to if mind. too many times I have writ written for specific actors. I usually will write something and then find people who are interested in playing the part. Okay. So like for the spaghetti monster, I actually, my voice actor, Ryan Manley Roar, he also composed the theme song with Brad Wagner, a good friend nice. of mine. 
he ended up being the flying spaghetti monster, but he was actually the third person because like I kept losing people okay. through the casting process. But no, I didn't write that for anyone specific. Uh, I don't know if I... I'm trying to think now, because people will often say, like, hey, if you ever create a character that's this, yeah. I, I would love to be it. Is, is that something that sticks with you, maybe? It is, yeah. I mean, I keep people in mind for certain things. Mm -hmm. Maybe when I start writing, I come up with who will be perfect for it. Yeah. So... I don't know if I necessarily answered your question, but maybe what I do find that I do is I already have like a catalog of actors because okay. I've never held an audition for Boris Hell actually. Oh, no kidding. No, I mean, I, I know so many actors here in town yeah. from two worlds actually. So being involved with the haunted house for so long has been a mm -hmm. blessing in a lot of ways because I know a lot of young actors that are very, uh, just energetic mm -hmm. and scream loud. They can wear <laughs> uncomfortable makeups and costumes. Yeah. So for certain things, I know who to go for. I'll sneak back to the haunted house like, oh, they would wear that. Yeah. And do a good job. Yeah, people that, that can um, have the, the stamina to put up with a lot of stuff. Or Yeah, so there's the haunt world and then there's the Denver acting world. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a good film community here. And through other projects, I've met so many people already that like I kind of already know. Like, oh, I yeah. did. I think I know who I want to use for this. Yeah. Right at first, and then I'll usually find someone and say, hey, would you be interested in this part? Yeah. Um, you, with your experience with, uh, you know, Face Off, you, you, I've noticed, like, a, a number of contestants, because I, I follow them on Facebook, have, have gone on to, to regular um, gigs, you know, doing TV and film and, and some other, you know, projects, usually on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. What brought you back to Denver? Denver feels like home. Okay. I haven't ruled out the idea of trying to thrive in another major city, mm -hmm. but the advantage of Denver is I feel like I can create a production here and be in control of it, okay. be able to be like the creator yeah. of something. And it's, you, you know, it's hard to say which side the grassroots green are on mm -hmm. because a lot of contestants have moved on and have worked on very amazing productions. Yeah. Uh, and that's really cool. It's great exposure experience. It's also uh, economically, it's usually really good for mm -hmm. you if you can get onto some of these. If you get into the union, it's even better. You know, with projects like what I'm doing, the downside is that it is, it, it hasn't moved me forward financially. Mm -hmm. But what it does is I think the payout is that I feel like it's it's really satisfying to be be like in control of something. Yeah. Be able to say like this is what I made, this is what I want to give to the yeah. world. You know, I feel like your name is more memorable versus mm -hmm. like um if you get to work on the Avengers. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Your name is gonna be a very Small name in a long list. Yeah, credits. pretty massive list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, yeah, it's yours. It's your own. Yeah. Um, I want to see what I can accomplish here first. Yeah. I mean, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Mm -hmm. They came from here too. And, yeah, you know, they had the same kind of idea. They wanted to create some kind of fun indie thing, and it took off. Some things do, some things don't. You never mm -hmm. know. But, yeah, you know, you got to try to find out. I, the, uh, I find that pretty admirable, uh, yeah, me as a creative, too. Um, uh, I mentioned earlier uh, OFM, where we got dressed up in big latex monster outfits mm -hmm. and had choreographed sword fights, and we would have aerialists drop out of the sky. That um, Did that for eight years. Uh, that's how I met Elizabeth, and, uh, you know, she, she helped out uh, with, you know, makeup and mold making, uh, probably doing a lot of the same things that, that you guys are doing on, on – uh, bored as hell um only i think you guys do it way better <laughs> but uh yeah but um you know yeah i think there's uh there's that sense of uh, accomplishment when you know it's it's your project and you're spearheading it and you also um you know for me you know make it a collaborative piece where people can come in and give suggestions and inform things. I think the gratification is that as an artist, you feel like you're leaving your footprint. Yeah. 
because I've also I've, I've got to work on some very cool projects, but the the recognition's not the same. Sure. So you know which which one's more important to you, and that's a yeah. personal decision to make. You yeah. know, some people just want to be on the set of Walking Dead and get to work on cool zombies, yeah, you know, or Stranger Things, and um, I I would love to do that. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. It's just you know which path do you want to chase? Because it's sure. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have the answer. It's because, you know, s success looks different to everyone and it's a different journey to everyone too. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's interesting. I, I think, uh, I think with the, uh, you know, the idea of success, hopefully it is different for everybody, but uh, I think too many people, especially with, with our society now tend to um, yeah, equate uh, success with, you know, monetary gain, mm -hmm. as as well as uh, exposure to fame and right. um, and uh, you know the masses too, um, but uh, but yeah, I you know I tend to define uh, success you know measured as well. I finished this thing. What's next? Completion is a huge part of success because yeah. completion is very difficult actually. Yeah, and people struggle with completion, and I feel like we've probably missed out on some of the best stories and creations that may have ever been that mm. they just weren't completed yeah um yeah a good example that that comes to mind um uh, you know there, there's that uh, documentary of uh Jordanovsky's dude uh i don't know if you've ever you know seen that or heard of that heard of it but not very familiar okay so you know back in the the 70s he came off of uh directing uh, holy mountain which was mm -hmm. his for him, it was a large budget, you know, art film, and it was, uh, you know, really well received, you know, in the, uh, the midnight, uh, you know, screenings around the world and, um, um, you know, the art house theaters at the time. And uh, he was he was given the option of, uh, you know, well, he was asked, what do you want to do next? And somebody put in his ear, you know, you should do do. He had no idea what it was at the time. He just like, yeah, I'm doing do. So he read it, and he digested it, and uh, created this massive production by him, assembled a huge team. And uh, the talent that he pulled together ended up informing uh, Alien, Blade Runner, um, Star Wars, you name it. Any sci-fi film for the next 15 years was pretty much informed, you know, big budget sci-fi yeah. film, was pretty much informed by the talent that he assembled for Dune. So like uh, Dan O'Bannon was going to be uh, you know one of the production designers. He had Mobius doing all the storyboards. And that's how Jordanovsky and, and Mobius started doing the graphic novels together in France. Well, that's inspiring because you don't, you, you never know how things are going to pay off. Yeah. And you don't know what the ripples are going to be either. Yeah. And how they're going to create. You don't know necessarily the cause and effect to what you mm -hmm. started yeah but you gotta start and you gotta be persistent too yeah well, um how do you find you know motive self uh self-motivating yourself well that's redundant <laughs> <laughs> self-motivation yeah is that a lot of coffee oh uh, yeah that uh, yes the answer is coffee i guess when it comes to motivation, mm -hmm. I don't know if I have a choice. Okay. I don't know if hmm. yeah. certain artists always do have a choice because when I'm done with something, I feel a bit of restlessness and I have to start working on something else. Yeah. I feel like my, I feel like projects kind of are my life. Okay. I can't recall a time when I was never working on something. Yeah. I think before I was like potty trained, I was coloring. I was actually, I was like coloring on walls and furniture and stuff. So that's always been my thing. I guess. Is it kind of a restlessness? It is, but it's also, there's a rush too from okay. challenging yeah. yourself because bored as hell has pushed my skills in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I've learned quite a bit about post-production and doing visual effects, something I had never done before. And through other people I've met and worked mm -hmm. with, I feel like I've learned even more. Okay. Sometimes someone will just recommend a book and I'll read it. And I feel like I've kind of, I've been given the tools to push myself even harder. Mm -hmm. So I guess I just find, I guess what motivates me is just trying to outdo myself. 
Because no, I like I like accomplishments and I like recognition from accomplishments. But what it does for me is it makes me want to like raise the bar again. Yeah. Like, okay, if I can do that. Yeah. Why can't I try something a little harder this next time? Nice. And completion drives me a lot. Yeah. Because I don't think I'm patient. Yeah. But I do think I'm persistent. Okay. So that's what drives me to finish. Yeah. This project, it's been fun. Mm -hmm. It's mostly fun when we're filming. Yeah. Because you got a lot of like happy synergy and the silliness and funny banter with the actors. The post production's not really the same. You're, it's it's a very isolated place, and you know you're just sitting in front of a computer, like clicking, looking at all these tiny little buttons, and hours go by. And there have been a few times where I think, why am I still doing this? Sure, this is really tedious. Yeah, but facing or even like entertaining the idea of like, well, what's the alternative? Mm -hmm. Not doing it. Like that's something that's hard to live with couldn't ever just stop the project and yeah. then tell everyone like hey guys you know thanks for sticking with me for years um yeah i don't think it's gonna i don't think it's gonna work out yeah and here's my excuse or excuses like i don't think any of it's good enough and we yeah push through and get it done get it done yes yeah. at least get it done yeah yeah uh, when, when i work on a group project you know especially if it's my own, I'm leading the way, and everybody else is jumping in on board. Uh, I do feel the need to to also, you know, see it through uh, because I owe it to them. There's pressure, and it's a good thing. Yeah, I think it's a very good thing to collaborate because I like to do fine art also. Like if I'm starting a painting and I don't finish, who cares? Yeah, look at all these paintings back here. Um, unless somebody, unless I'm doing it as a gift or a commission. Mm -hmm. I'm not letting someone down if I start a personal project and I'll finish. Yeah. The film is nothing like that. It's very collaborative. You don't typically see a film where the credits roll and it's one person. Yeah. You work with a lot of people and it is a tremendous letdown if you don't finish. I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I've worked on multiple projects for other directors, producers that were never done. Yeah. And I think we all have, and it's always disappointing because you want to see the fruit of your labor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, you know, the fruit of your labor and also if it's somebody else's project, you know, that recognition that they mm -hmm. appreciate. Yeah. 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 I think that's, that's definitely important. Uh, it looks like, uh, Bonnie, uh, it looks like it's a statement. Creativity is everything, especially when you're starting out. Um, but, uh, speaking of starting out, so with art school, um, yeah, you know, was it uh, you know makeup effects that uh, that you started out with, or sculpting, or what was uh, the, the focus of the, the curriculum? Well, with art school, I actually went for industrial design, which is oh, okay. it's, it's a bit far removed from this, kind of, but it's kind of not. I mean, it has a lot more to do with commercial arts, mm -hmm. um, creating things that are manufacturable, creating yeah. product design, uh, doing mechanical drawings, drafting, and, yeah. and actually that has been helpful. I think it, it's most helpful if I'm creating sets or if I'm trying to refine the process mm -hmm. of art. I think my degree, I think it gave me a lot of aptitude in process and refinement. Okay. Because uh, I think before that discipline, I used to get hard on myself if I'd create something that wasn't perfect, mm -hmm. but things never have to be. We always yeah. have, we have updated software. We have new additions to textbooks. We have new makes and models of everything. Yep. Um, nothing ever does. I, we don't need remakes of every great movie. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, things are always being refined. Yeah. Because the first time we did Satan, it was for a, a short contest film. And it was actually very rough. Yeah. The first inception of Satan that had this prosthetic here. But Ooh, it's nice and it wasn't... I wouldn't call it a good makeup, to be honest. Mm -hmm. it you wouldn't? Or and I would not. It was it was very rushed, and it was very pale. And I mean, we were trying to glue the horns in place nice. the day of, and he had to endure like 10 hours worth of us second-guessing ourselves. And this is a foam latex? This is foam latex, oh, yeah. it's so nice and light and soft. But what really beget the whole idea is that when Heath was dressed up as this guy, he was just mm -hmm. being funny. Yeah. He was dancing around and singing as this funny Satan. It got all our wheels turning. So like, 
What if we just did a show about Satan? And then give us that funny voice, mm -hmm. please. It was it was always, you know, that actor. That would... Yeah, so if it weren't for Heath, there would not be bored as hell because okay. it was specifically written for him. Nice. And maybe that kind of takes us back to one of our points earlier in the conversation mm -hmm. where he asked if anything was ever written for anyone. Yeah. And I said it wasn't. I I guess that was a lie. I guess the whole, <laughs> the whole thing actually was, was there. Was, the whole thing was written <laughs> for this one actor. Yeah. You know, because we never had the idea okay. until he, you know, just gave us a kind of funny impromptu performance. Nice. Where where did that something like that take place? Just you know, at the house or yeah. in the studio? Mm -hmm. Nice. At the house. Okay. Nice. Yeah, it's just such a it was, it was a very trial kind of makeup. But yeah, he gave us such a funny performance. He's actually dancing to. There's a song about Buffalo Bill. It's like a parody song about putting the lotion on the skin. And yeah. He okay. Started. <laughs> he kind of just came up with this very sort of. Uh, I don't know. This very just animated flamboyant kind of scene. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know, on on uh, season one, yeah, he he does come off flamboyant, kind of effeminate. It's, it's, he does. He just he just comes off very fancy, very yeah. self important. Yeah. Very, uh, I don't know. He's he's regal so many times, but what's funny about Satan is that I feel like it's it's a creation. It's like Heath and I had a baby almost because uh, okay, there there is a script. With some exceptions, like mm -hmm. you might have seen some Q and A's we do with Satan. That's all Heath. Okay. People will write in with a funny question to Satan, and he'll just like on the spot answer it. Nice. If you go to the Board of Health page on Facebook, you'll see some is that, Q and A's. Is that something that you guys do regularly? We do. Like okay. usually, what'll happen is if we're filming an episode and we have mm -hmm. access to the set, we'll be like, "All right, let's take a few questions from nice. our fans," and I'll just go on Facebook, like, "All right, who asked this question?" And then That's correct. A funny answer. So, what what's great is that I feel like it allows the actor to act because the actor behind the makeup really does matter. I mean, actors matter anyway because yes. they have to look and be a certain way. Yeah. So you look for actors that fit the bill. But even when you transform them, the actor underneath still matters. I couldn't have another actor do this. So it has to be Heath because he brings a certain Heathism to it. Yeah. And so when we're filming an episode, in that case, it is scripted. Mm -hmm. And so that's where my voice comes out is in okay. the writing. Yeah. But then his voice comes out because he'll add some funny little anecdote and it usually makes a cut. Something a little improv or improv. Yeah, too. and what I what's a joy with Satan to me is yeah. he's a very reflective character. Yeah. And we can get into some pretty like deep territory. Just the concept of morality oh, okay. and how confusing it is. Yeah, you know, because if Satan's been around forever, morality's been a shifting landscape for centuries. Yeah, and yeah. things, you know, things are perfectly fine today. They used to be immoral. Some things are uh, inappropriate now. They used to fly, and things yeah. are so confused. And his uh, his commentary on it can be very satirical, mm -hmm. which is what I really like to write. Okay. And he can go from being very eloquent to all of a sudden being very either vulgar or uh, very modern, too. I nice. love it when he goes from these soliloquies where he's using all these big words to just dropping some <laughs> kind of slang phrase that we yeah. all the time. Oh. Nice. And, uh, and, and Heath is very, very biblical, actually. He, he likes mm. it. Uh, he is. He, okay. he really loves Jesus. Um, so he knows the scriptures very well. Oh, interesting. Which is very helpful because he can add a lot of humor that might be yeah. esoteric to some people, but to people that are more familiar with, yeah, you know, the Bible or religion, like they 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 see some of the <laughs> the inside jokes. Nice. Uh, you know, getting back to the questions, uh, if you guys have uh, a question for uh, you know Kevin, I yeah, either now, what, yeah, Elizabeth, yeah, oh, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't remember. Oh, okay. I didn't remember the name. I remember the name. Well, leave it to Elizabeth. Thanks, Elizabeth, for, for pointing that out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you guys have questions, post them here. Post them to our Facebook page. We'll, we'll forward them on to Kevin. Maybe we'll uh, we'll see if uh, if Satan will answer them. Yeah. Yeah, we can have Satan answer them. Yeah, that'll be fun. No holds barred, though. I, 
Yeah. I have no idea what he's going to say. So. Oh, yeah. Ask at your own risk. Oh, excellent. That's that's good. Well, if, if he knows uh, the scripture, maybe he'll, he'll uh, respond in something biblical, you know, yeah. like, like a plague or something. Yeah, that, that'll happen too. Oh, fantastic. That's That, that brings so many people together. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff's well, pretty endearing. And I guess kind of carrying off of that, what's fun mm-hmm. about Bored as Hell is like, I don't think we have any kind of mission statement with it. Yeah. Like, there's no like agenda or any kind of like point we're trying to push. We're just... It's just fun. Yeah. It's fun to just make jokes. Well, earlier you said it was like very SNL in, in that, you know, and, and when you watch it too, it's, there's common threads through each mm-hmm. episode and stuff, but it feels like little vignettes, you know, like they're, they're all, they all I think they all stand alone. I mean, yeah. there's like some soft continuity from episode to episode. Yeah. We have characters that reoccur. Yeah. But no, like it's not, it's not a serious drama where watching it in order it's critical. Yeah. It's nothing like it. And I don't want it to be there because I want the delivery to be as easy as possible because people are going to want to watch it on their phones most of the time. I think that's the way, because that, yeah. you know, that's just how it is now. And I think that's how most people will see it. So it has to be entertaining and also short. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the 10, 15 minute format works really I, I well think, I think it works, on YouTube. So, yeah. You know, until the day it's on like a network or something. Yeah. Keep it short. Uh, someone said, I don't know, one of my old teachers said this. Whenever we had to like write a report, we'd say, how long does that have to be? Yeah. And she'd say, well, like a miniskirt. <laughs> long enough to cover the subject, short enough to keep it interesting. Yeah, so. true. Nice. That That is a really good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I'll have to use that with my girlfriend. <laughs> sorry, Elise. <laughs> but, but you're not sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, but not really, yeah. No. <laughs> No, that's that's great. Um, and Elizabeth, man, uh, I still want to know why God hates women uh, if Satan has an answer. I think oh. he, I think he did answer that, didn't he? Boy, I, I can't well, I remember. I remember. You're the one that wrote it. <laughs> no, I have nothing to do with the Q and A's. Oh, the Q and A's. Okay, all right. Yeah. I don't know, probably because Eve started the whole mess. Yeah. So we did do an Adam and Eve episode. You should watch that. Yeah. yeah. It's basically, it's. It's women's fault. You were told not to take the fruit, and you did it anyways. Yeah. Oh. Darn Bible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of, of uh, that episode, like, that one really stands out. Like, stylistically, it's, it's, a, it's like, a nice departure. It's also a nice end cap, because that's the, the season closer for, for the first, uh, first season. Right. Um, so what, what compelled you? Because that, yeah, like I said, that one really stands out to me. I think, you know, as you're producing all the episodes, like also that's the, the tighter episode. That one's the one that felt like. Um, I think that's when we really found our footing, actually. Yeah. So I feel like season one had a lot of growing pains, actually, and I think we found our footing right at the end. Okay. Which is why I'm excited to show the new stuff, because I think yeah. it's, it's really come a long ways, but. With that episode, I think what you're saying is it felt the most refined. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting is it was actually the easiest to write, oh, okay. which I mean might speak to why it turned out the best. It's because okay. I, th- I think if it's easy to write, it really means you're inspired. It just comes straight from your brain to the script, and then it's just easy to manufacture. Nice. I wanted to do a funny – I like sitcoms, and I like the laugh track a lot. Yeah. And I used to love I Love Lucy. Okay. It's so good. I mean, yeah. like, it is. will forever be one of the greatest shows ever. Agreed. And I wanted to do that kind of throwback. I wanted to do the husband and wife banter. Yeah. And I wanted to add the laughs in there. And I wanted to do something black and white. And I figured it was perfect. Because, like, you're going back to the beginning of mankind. Make it black and white. And if it's black and white, it's got to be retro. So mm-hmm. put the laugh track in there. And that's why I wanted the 50s kind of hairdos. Yeah. And I also, again, wanted to challenge myself because I had never done a composite with makeup and a puppet. And so for that episode, we did have Heath wearing a, uh, it was a prosthetic like this, but Mm -hmm. it was tailored to look more snake-like. Oh, okay. So he wore the prosthetic, but then... So all new sculpt? It was a new sculpt, 
and he wore a green morph suit, so neck down, he was deleted, and then the face oh, okay. was attached yeah. to a puppet snake. And so the puppet snake was achieved with like rods and stuff. So oh, that's great. It was all practical. Yeah. Um, and it worked well. It took a long time to kind of, for me, to learn how to do that well. Okay. And since then, I've done it several more times, and so you'll see a few characters in the next season. Not nice. the same way. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, for the first season, that was a standout, and it was definitely my favorite episode. And yeah. I, I think it was the only, one of the only times, because I do not like laugh tracks. I think yeah. it works well with what you were saying with I Love Lucy and some of the classic, uh, yeah, I think, modern sitcoms. It usually, it, it feels forced. I think it works because when you make a satire out of something, it makes mm. you like what you normally don't like. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the whole point pointing yep. out something that you normally think, oh, this sucks. Mm -hmm. But this time I like it because you're making fun of it. It's like yeah. sometimes I like Weird Al's version of the song better than the, I like the original I, version of the song. Yeah, I, I could say that with, yeah. Um, quite a few of his hits, actually. Yeah, for me, it's the it's all, it's all almost all of his Michael Jackson uh, songs and then the, the Coolio song, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Gangster's Paradise. That, Gangster's Paradise. That, uh, I think Amish Paradise, Paradise is Amish better. Amish Paradise, I think, yeah. I think Fat is better yeah. than Bad. Yeah, I, I, I like Fat versus Bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what definitely. I mean. And that's, and that's another opportunity we like to take with Bored as Hell. We do like to satirize pop culture a lot. Nice. Because everyone enjoys it. Um, you enjoy it if you dislike that sort of part of culture. Yeah. But you also enjoy it if you like it, too. I, th I think so, too. I think it works both ways. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I think uh, it, it, just depending on your perspective, you, you're going to pull different things out of it um, that you like. Uh, yeah, that's that's why I'm so taken by for as hell, because I am a fan. I really enjoy what you're doing like and then where you're going. Um, and so I, I can't wait to, to see season two. Um, one thing that, uh, that came to mind is who are your bigger influences? Like, you know, as far as like horror goes, you know, what did you grow up like watching and enjoying? So Trey Parker, Matt Stone, for sure. Oh yeah. Cause I really, I admire their indie spirit a lot mm -hmm. and how infectious their, passion was in yeah. their project yeah because they just you know they wanted to do something that was edgy and um, statistically should have failed mm -hmm. and they did it anyways and i think the love is what made them succeed okay because a lot of times if something's funny to you it's gonna be funny to other people yeah if you can get it to the world you're gonna find your audience you'll find your anti-audience but sometimes that even helps that can even sure. help you so i'm inspired by them a lot because i also think um i, I, I think pushing boundaries is important yeah. Because it gets people talking, um, yeah. for better and for worse. Yeah. Jim Henson, I admire a lot mm -hmm. for his imagination. Uh, Tim Burton, I would say 80s, 90s Tim Burton. Okay, yeah, I could see that. Matt yeah. Groening created The Simpsons. I yeah. always grew up really admiring. And then, as far as makeup goes, like Rick Baker's an obvious one. Okay. And... Not definitely for like his work with like uh, creatures, mm -hmm. his men in black stuff, and American yeah. Werewolf in London, but also for his non creature stuff. I mm. love the Nutty Professor. Rick Baker oh, did those okay. the fat suits. Yeah. Uh, mm. And that's inspiring. Yeah. As an actor, Eddie Murphy is really inspiring to me because he transformed into all those characters. Yeah. Mike Myers has done the same thing in Austin Powers. And. Robin Williams, definitely a huge inspiration. Okay. I remember watching Mrs. Doubtfire all the time. And that movie oh, okay. was yeah. inspiring in two respects. As an artist, it was. Because mm -hmm. I was always very amazed at the transformation. Oh, okay. I remember yeah. even being a kid thinking, there's no way that's just a simple mask he pulls off and on. Yeah. And it's true, it is. And it was yeah. several Four hours of overlapping yeah. prosthetics. <laughs> but the transformation. The transformation as a performer was also amazing, which yeah. is Robin Williams. Yep. So, uh, same thing with Satan. I think you need your artist, but you need your actor. Yeah. I know Heath's big inspiration is Jim Carrey. Yeah. And I see a lot of that in his performance. I see a lot of Jim Carrey uh, in, <laughs> injected <no> into, <laughs> into Satan, particularly nice. with the Grinch. Let's hear 
My my comments. Mine just walked through. You yeah. <laughs> You could have just you yelled it at, at the at the, the back. Uh, Maya says, "Hope you enjoyed my uh, trunch <laughs> trunch bowl bun and laundry day fashions." Oh, we do. Thank you. Yes, yes, you're welcome. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> that was just for you guys. Excellent. Totally planned. <laughs> totally knew it. Oh man. Yeah, it's like Kanye West kind of you know you know, you know dropping in on uh, uh, Taylor Swift's uh, yeah accepted speech here. Yeah, not as uh, insulting or embarrassing. No, uh, if anything, probably more welcomed. Yeah, <laughs> fits right in with this crew. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, so uh, speaking of uh, you know Jim Henson, Dark Crystals, new Dark Crystals coming out. Yeah, Love it. I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, I like I like the homages. Yeah, because that's gonna take you back in time. Stranger Things. Yeah. Straight 80s nostalgia. I, I, I think people like, kind of want to go back to what they loved. Yeah. And so I, I think that's why history repeats itself. Well, I, I think with the, the 80s, you, you've got that generation that, that have grown up and they're the executives in some mm -hmm. of these media houses. So they're the ones. Yeah, you, you know, your, your fans become your creators. Yeah, yeah. And what I love about inspiration is it's kind of a torch you pass on. Mm -hmm. Because. Your heroes were inspired by someone also. Yeah. And I think that's cool. It's a really awesome gift. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you talked a little bit about uh, remakes earlier, um, you know, and, and as well as like inspiration. Uh, you've got the original, you know, for example, you've got the original uh, The Thing that came out, mm -hmm. I think, in the 50s. Uh, and then you got John Carpenter's, which is. I would say it's an example of uh, something coming out and it is actually, you know, much more, um, you know, successful than, you yeah. know, than it's a remake. Remakes can outdo. Yeah. Originals. Yeah, it's it, it, it's tough to do, but, you know, I think anybody who does them, that's the end goal. Um, other than on the marketing side, the money aspect. Yeah, I was going to say that would be the end goal if it wasn't a business. Yeah, 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 true. Um, but, you know... It, and the way I look at it is essentially it's just like, okay, you know, yeah, every generation you're probably going to have uh, a retelling of something. You know, how yes, many... I don't know where I stand on that because on one hand, like, the elitist in me kind of is over all the remakes because I think sure. you need to let generations, like, have their thing. Yeah. But then on another hand, I don't know, is it okay to, like, bring a story back so, like, another generation can appreciate it? Yeah. It, it depends. Some remakes are good or some are like uh, I think some of Disney's remakes have been good, some haven't. Yeah. Yeah, and the way I see it is uh, essentially it's like you're how many times has any of Shakespeare's tour, uh, stories been reinterpreted and right. retold, performed and made into films? Well, um, yeah, there's a saying that there are no original ideas and in some ways sure. that's true. Yeah. Because if you take a lot of stories, it's got the same tropes as something that's very familiar. And back to Shakespeare, a lot of his influences were, you know, classic Greek tragedies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. In fact, uh, you know, Romeo and Juliet, you know, that was uh, a retail, uh, retelling of, I um, uh, can't remember the exact, uh, you know, tragedy, but uh, another, you know, uh, scorn, you know, lovers from opposite yeah. families. Yeah, and I mean, that story will never stop being told. Yeah. that's, I mean, that's in every drama. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so moving forward, how many uh, more seasons of well, I'm Hard as Hell? I need a break from this. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll kind of see. I am curious to kind of figure out what kind of future this has because it, it's quite a bit of fun. And I'd like to yeah. continue it. There's other ideas I have for the continuation of Satan and some of these other characters. But I want to figure out, like, what's what the end game is here okay because right now i'm not sure i kind of want to measure how successful it is and kind of gauge the reception so if you can find uh, yeah i mean audience. i think if we find an audience i think if people like it mm -hmm. i might want to continue it we might just go on a hiatus for a while pick okay. it up again later i don't know it's, it's going to be nice to just let it simmer because yeah. it's been non-stop work for quite a few years now yeah and i think we're about to see the best of it, and I'm anxious to see what 
what comes after that because I don't know. Yeah. You know, you you never know. When you create something, you don't know how people are going to take it. Yeah. And that's it's, – it's, it's a fun part, actually. Yeah. Um, with, uh, you know, people – yeah, young people. Um, and granted, you're. I think you're much younger than I am. Uh, probably like almost ten years. You're in your thirties, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you are. <laughs> um, with younger people, you know, getting into this, into filmmaking, storytelling, you know, makeup, special effects. You know, what what kind of um, uh, suggestions would you recommend? Uh, just do it. Uh, get off your ass. It's actually the hardest part, yeah. but it's the first step to anything. Yeah. And plan on failing a lot. Mm. Plan on getting frustrated. Yeah. And expect it to be really hard. Yeah. But just do it anyways. The completion matters a lot. If you look at the early work of anybody, it's not going to be their best. But yeah. I mean, push to finish it. Because you learn something every time you finish something. Even if in your mind it was a failure, you can at least – find a few gems in a failure. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think it's okay that like we create things that we sometimes don't always like, but your your successes are measured by how many times you did fail at something. Yeah. And I think trying to check yourself and trying to curtail your discouragement is mm -hmm. really important because yeah. where is it written that you have to be great at something to get started? Right. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. Not, you're not necessarily going to be, you know, take to it like a, you know, like a fish in water. No, and you don't have to, but also learning how to do something is so easy now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can go online on, and watch. I, I, I do it all the time. It doesn't yeah. matter what you want to learn. I mean, you can find information immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can also, you can get feedback immediately because social media has such a reach. Yeah. And if true. you want, if you want people to see what you do, you can, it depends on who you seek. I mean, sometimes we do need validation. We need to feel good about what we're doing. Sure. You know, once in a while, like get advice from someone that's going to be tough on it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you know, is going to actually help move you along. And I think what's helped me is I've, I've definitely been mentored by difficult people. Okay. I've had, I've had employers that are hard to work for. Uh, Face off was definitely a skin thickener for me. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, be be resilient to harsh words sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Or actually, all the time. Yeah. Because that's never going to stop. In fact, uh, people don't have to be nice to you. Uh, not everyone's going to like bored as hell. It's definitely. I think it's got an anti audience for sure. Okay. But it doesn't mean I can't do it. Yeah. So. I don't know. I don't know if I made a singular point in all that because you asked what advice I have for somebody who wants to get that, into this. That's okay. Yeah. So, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, a diatribe like that, you know, is well. Just, just doing it um, yeah. is my is my biggest advice. Talk to people that know a little bit more. Yeah. I that guess um, network, but don't get hung up on the discouragement. I guess if I, if I had to narrow it down okay. to a, a piece of advice, I think it's the most valuable. I think it's that one. Yeah. Because if you try to check your discouragement, you're going to keep going. And sticking, sticking to something mm -hmm. is going to make all the other things work out. Yeah. That's, that's my advice. So, uh, yeah, and, and uh, we're going to start wrapping up, but uh, what do you do on your free time? Huh. Okay. <laughs> uh, None. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, my, my free time is is, this. is full of projects. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people have accused me of being a workaholic, but you know, people have people like to do different things. Mm -hmm. They yeah. have time, and so I mean, this is work, but it's it's pleasure too. I like it most of the time. <laughs> so that's mostly what I do. But nice. you know, we do cosplay a lot. There are a few. That's true. I ran into you guys at uh, Denver Pop Culture Con or whatever. Yeah, it's called so now. we do. I, I guess art kind of defines my life when it comes to work and play. Yeah. Because when we, when we do fun stuff, a lot of times it is some kind of way to show off. We yeah. like to go to the, when the clubs do like some kind of a theme. We like to oh, okay. characters. We like doing the conventions. 
Yeah, it was at uh, Denver Pop Culture Con. You you went as the entire Adams family. Nice. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I heard a woohoo we did from that. the shower. Yeah, Maya's in the shower right now, but she's listening. Uh, that's our that's our crowd, uh, you know, audience response. We were uh, we all did Zombies in Wonderland too last year. Nice. Oh, cool. Uh, you know, Liz put that together, and that was you know that was a fun thing to do. And then this year we're going to be the Wizard of Oz zombie style. Fantastic. So it's all the same stuff. We're going to do the same kind of thing where we sculpt a prosthetic and then zombify ourselves. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, our audience uh, is walking back yeah, to their room. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> say hi. Hello. You can say Hello. hi. I just showered. <laughs> you can answer your own comment in person. Uh, if you want. I was in those cosplays too. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have we have, Maya, we have Maya's face here somewhere. Oh yeah, I can see my cool dead looking face. No, it's not the Trump, so that's good. Yeah, I do have a Donald Trump prosthetic. This is so cool. Oh, okay. I'm hiding in the cave now. Nice. Yeah, that feels. It's a little bit has, silicone. Has yeah, if anyone's interested in effects, uh, it's a little bit more durable. Silicone's right? more lifelike and more translucent. Yeah. Foam latex is uh, it's lightweight. It's easier to paint too. Mm -hmm. um, Silicone's not easy to paint, right? It's no, it's a pain in the ass to paint. Yeah, it looks good though. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely. Definitely. yeah. Satan has always been a, a foam latex application. We have to make. I have so many Satan faces because it gets destroyed each time. Yeah, each up or well, each time you have to take it off. Yeah, yeah. What you have to do is it's glued down, and you have to use a remover to get the glue off, but it ends okay. up disintegrating it and it rolls your edges. It looks terrible. So yeah, mm. we bake a fresh one each time we need to get Satan in makeup. And that, this stuff is not cheap. Neither is us. No, I mean, nothing's cheap. That's why, you know, people got to pay their artists because, you know, we have a hot, we have an expensive lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's true. You, you know, when you run into that in the real world, uh, you know, people are like, well, why do I have to pay you? This is, this is fun for you. It's like, like you no. like doing this. Exactly. You love doing it. So we're doing you a fucking work. If anything, I'm, I'm working twice as much as, as uh, you know, your no, plumber. No, I, I find or... it very patronizing. I mean, yeah. when I was a kid and someone wanted me to, like, draw a picture of, like, crowns and construction paper, it was a compliment. But, uh, yeah. No, when, when you're an adult, it's... Yeah, it's, our, it's artists, work. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm doing this for you. You're, you're paying me. Oh, yeah. This is my hourly rate. Yeah. Yeah, they can they can be uh, pretty uh, infuriating, most definitely. Oh wow! Well, well so, that's why it's that's why I like kind of working on my own projects because yeah. you know client clients can be very difficult and frustrating, and mm -hmm. employers can be too. So I, I think it's important for people to find what they like doing, you know, yeah. outside of their job. Yeah, because we don't all get our dream jobs, even if we get a job we like. We should find something that we like doing outside of that. Yeah. You know, for me, it's this. I've always, like, growing up, I remember watching SNL thinking, I want to do that someday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, doing skits and yeah. everything. Um, yeah, that's pretty fun. Um, so, uh, you know, to, to kind of tie things up, um, where, again, can we uh, see uh, Ford uh, as Board as Board's hell. Uh, well, yeah. give us <laughs> yeah. a like on Facebook because we do have some content on our Facebook page. We have a few episodes up on YouTube right now, and we'll have more soon. But come to the bug August 11th. It's going to be free. So I don't see a downside to this. Just show up and yeah. hang out with us. We yeah. have some autographs from Satan. I think there's going to be like some cupcakes too. We'll post uh, the event uh, on the yeah. comment section and uh, also on the event page and our uh, homepage as well. Bug Theater. Also, and go to the Bug Theater and like buy some like drinks and concessions because yeah. that those proceeds help them a lot. And they're, I, I would say they're the most supportive. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Filmmakers. Yeah. So I think um, I I'm actually very happy to, to bring people there. Yeah, they've they've got a lot of uh, great programs right now. Uh, you know, yeah, the Emerging Filmmakers Project. They used to have Open Screen Night. Um, now they've got uh, on a regu fairly regular basis. Uh, the Grolics are back. You know, doing uh, live comedy. If if you don't know who they are, um, you know Ben Roy and those guys from uh, 
those who can't, that TV show, um, True TV, you know, they're back doing, uh, you know, live events at, uh, at the bug. So, yeah. And that, that's another great opportunity that Denver has is that yeah. if you are new, it's something, um, in this case, filmmaking, you'll find the community is pretty supportive. I mean, I went to the bug theater years ago and like right mm -hmm. away shook hands with people and met people and, uh, you know, you get to submit, even if it's very raw and, primitive and rough and you just you make a movie just because you want to do it i mean they'll show your work and you can yeah. meet people that can give you feedback and it's th there are a lot of easy ways to like get started with this mm -hmm. yeah nice well uh i'm dan crozier with uh kofo live and undead uh uh my guest uh kevin Gordon. Yeah. and good talk yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks for for hanging out and, and uh, yeah, chatting. I'm glad you asked me to do this. It's yeah, cool. and thanks for for plugging us. Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, go watch uh, Bored as Hell, and uh, you know, go see why I'm a fan. Uh, go be a fan too. Go support uh, independent uh, filmmakers and uh, creators. Go uh, August 11th to the Bug and uh, meet Kevin, meet Satan uh, in person, not just uh, the prosthetic. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, and then it, for those of you who don't know, uh, COFO is actually a Colorado Festival of, uh, Horror, and, uh, you know, we're working next year to bring a small, intimate, uh, horror festival to Denver, so, you know, stay tuned for, uh, announcements on that, too. All right. Thanks so much, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, All right. Great. All right. We're signing right, off. Everyone.